This right here is a threat that I received in my mailbox less than half a month ago. And as scary as it might seem to find out that there's a local investigation happening within my postcode because of crimes that I've been committing within my property, I'm not too sure I'm taking this very seriously. And I don't think any British people in my audience are either. And there's good reason for that. Why? Well, strap yourselves right on in. Today's video is about TV licensing. Now, if you're new to my channel, you might not know. Hi, my name is Evan Edinger, and I like making videos about UK culture, US culture, anything else I find interesting. And today's, of course, is TV licenses. You might be unaware, but I have actually made a video comparing the US and the UK systems of how they disseminate their TV. I'll link that above. But for a too long, didn't watch, don't feel like it right now, basically the way that works in the US is you plug into the wall, you don't get many channels, you have to pay for them. A cable company will give you all the channels you want for an exorbitant amount of money, like a hundred bucks per month for the most part, because they get landline and uh, Wi-Fi either way. In the UK, you plug in, you pretty much got everything and you're meant to pay afterwards. You're meant to be like, hey, oh yes, I plugged in my TV to watch some live TV and now I've got to pay for it. However, you know, some people are new to the country, some people are old pensioners, or some people are just forgetful. And so they might not actually pay their TV license. Hence why you get one of these polite letters in the mail. Now, if you are new to the country or an old person, you get the first one, it's pretty polite. You might say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I made a mistake and you pay the TV license. However, every consecutive month, you will get more and more and more. In fact, so far, I've got so many of these stinking TV licensing things that it kind of loses the entire scariness of it all. In fact, we've got one from January, we've got one from February, we've got one from April, and geez, I even got one before I even moved into the property. So, turns out, I'm breaking the law before I even moved in. It was really hard to get this flat. <laughs> what exactly do these official stamp looking documents really say? Well, this one here says there's a local investigation active in my postcode. And as there's no record for a TV license at my address, they've authorized an enforcement visit. Now that will scare a lot of people. You know, at this point they're saying, you've broken the law and let's just say you are someone that is watching TV, you're going to feel a little bit scared about this. So the entire goal of these types of letters is to scare you into complying and to pay for your TV license. It goes on to say, it is a criminal offense to watch or record live TV programs on any channel or device or download to watch BBC programs on iPlayer, which is basically Boomer Netflix, without being covered by a TV license. This could result in prosecution, a fine of up to thousand pounds plus legal fees. But how much exactly is a TV license? Well, you'll be surprised to learn it's only 159 pounds a year, unless of course you only wanna watch in black and white, that's only like 33 quid, not too bad. By American standards, this is arguably quite a deal. However, I, and I think many people these days, aren't really tuning in to watch any live TV. In fact, most of everything I watch is YouTube related or possibly on Netflix or any of these other downloadable, streamable internet type things. I'm not really using the TV for much of anything. And in fact, the TV that I own isn't plugged into the wall except to connect to the Wi-Fi so I can actually watch things I wanna watch. But if they're sending me letters like this and are even detailing in some of these certain dates they're going to visit, like this one here, they're like, oh boy, April 13th, you gonna be in, bro? Cause we're stopping by, we've got an enforcement officer. Shouldn't I be concerned when they come in that maybe they're gonna catch me, maybe look at me doing something on iPlayer or watching something where I don't have the rights to it and then I might get fined? No because you see, they don't actually legally have any right to enter my property. All they can do is knock, knock, knock on the door and say, can we come in? And I go, no, goodbye, goodbye. That's it, you don't, you don't offer them in for a cup of tea, that's it. All they can do is knock on the door and say, please. And you just have to say, nein danke, no thank you. They'll use certain phrasing to make you think they have the rights to enter your property and scare you around, such as saying, what do you need to know about the enforcement process? Well, we can apply to a court for a search warrant to gain access to your property. Now that is true. However, there's a really important word in that sentence, which is can. We can apply for a search warrant, uh, but we're not going to do that because that's a lot of effort for this type of thing. So it's just not going to happen. You don't have to worry. So yeah, it's a big piss take, but here's the thing. It's a piss take for people like you and me. We know the law. We understand how everything works. We're not going to take this seriously. But as I said, pensioners are people that these are really targeting. They're trying to scare them into paying. And also people like me nine years ago, when I first moved to the country as an initial expat, I got one of these in the frickin' door at Dovin Flat, and I was like, oh my God, I don't know how this works. Are they gonna catch me? They said there's an enforcement officer coming. I don't wanna get arrested. I haven't committed any crimes. And so I do the thing that you're probably screaming at the screen right now. Why don't you just write to them telling them that you don't watch the TV? 
I did this. I said, come on into Dovin Flat, sir. I let the guy in. He gives one look to the flat and realizes, well, we've got a TV, but we use it so infrequently, it's currently under that one glass table that every British person has at one point in their life owned, not plugged into the wall at all. Hey, I don't watch TV. I was like, I, I, I don't know. I'm watching stuff on my computer and I don't even know what iPlayer is. I put on the most American accent ever. He leaves. That's case closed. However, that just kind of delays it for a little bit because they will eventually start sending you letters again like, are you still not watching TV? Which is infuriating. So rather than have to tell them I'm not watching TV so that someone actually has to visit my property and go, yep, looks like you're not watching anything illegal. We'll write you down. I'll just keep getting these once every single month until the day I die or until the TV licensing fees are scrapped. Actually, just saw this in the news just yesterday. BBC license fee faces the scrap from 2028 as Tory suggests it is unsustainable. So the current system of how much the fee costs for the licensing and to even watch TV at all has been set until 2027. But the Tories are saying that they're going to basically get rid of that 159 pound fee as it's not really sustainable. Now, I don't really know why that's the, the angle they're going for here. And I don't think the Tories have done a very very good job at anything. However, their decision to recently privatize Channel 4, which is profitable, is mind-blowing to me, only because, what is it, they made like 74 million pounds profit in 2020. Let's privatize it. What? That, that's actually working. The TV licensing may be not working, maybe find a new way of doing this, but Channel 4, I digress. So it says uh, an increasing number of households are choosing not to hold a TV license as fewer people choose to watch live TV or other activities that require a TV license. Yeah, I, I mean, question for anyone out there. Are, are you someone that actually watches live TV? I feel like the only people out there that are gonna say yes are sports people, okay? I personally don't give a shit about any sport. I just don't. I'm not gonna watch any live sports and so I'm not going to pay for a TV license to do that. But if you're someone into the footy, if you're into the rugby, you're gonna probably want that TV license. And so it's kind of like a fee for enjoying sports. That's your sacrifice for the rest of us. Now Labour's coming out and saying this is a horrible thing because we're gonna have fewer British made programs for British audiences and less support for British jobs across the country. But I would disagree with that because the thing is, BBC aren't the only people making TV programs within the UK. Netflix are shooting loads of stuff out here. Apple TV, Ted Lasso, anybody? You know, the one show that they've got, it was great, shot in the UK. In my opinion, the question is not really if, but when we scrap the TV license. The thing is, you can't argue with statistics. You can't, they don't talk back to you, okay? The numbers do not lie. And if fewer people every single year are tuning in to watch live TV programs, it's just a matter of time before it's just not sustainable, as annoyingly the Tories have said. It's not a thing that's going to keep making anyone really much money if more and more people are tuning into, for instance, this type of YouTube video. Thank you for subscribing. Or Netflix or Apple TV or any of these other programs. But also, I do think it's important to note that the TV does serve a really important purpose for a lot of people in their lives. As much as I can go on about like, oh yes, I haven't used the TV in years. There are people in which the TV is their only connection to certain people. You know, a lot of pensioners might just put the TV on and feel like they have someone in the room and they can fight off loneliness. Sort of like a boomer Twitch, you know? Don't worry, that streamer's my best friend, okay? I watch him play every game and I love him. And he loves me back. I gave him five pounds, so he better. And so, at the end of the day, I'm gonna keep spinning. <laughs> And so, if you find yourself receiving one of these threats into your post box at any point in your life, you don't have to worry about it. Don't take it seriously. It's less a threat to you and more to the establishment of TV basically going down. And don't worry, you can be trustworthy. You don't have to lie since you don't watch TV. Lie sense. License? All right, <laughs> we're ending with one. Anyway, tell me your thoughts. Have you ever actually paid for a TV license? Do you watch TV? Are you that type of person? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below, or you can watch this previous video where I talked about the differences between US and UK television with my friend. Feeling good to be back with the old stubble and making content I'm freaking proud of. I'll see you around here on my channel next Sunday. Goodbye.